Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one retail at a time, back with his Thursday expert, Mr. Jonathan Twomley. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic, Michael. How are you? I'm doing well. One of the things I love about talking to you every week is you get a lot of articles and you're kind of in the weeds of stuff that I never see. And uh, you came across an article that talked about some multifamily assets uh, trading multiple times in a very short window. I think that's a sign of just how nutty the market has been. But uh, let's talk about the article. And uh, yeah, so, so uh, I mean, this is something that I had noticed actually already in some of the markets that I'm in, where seeing deals that like I looked at to buy years ago coming on the market again. And that, you know, after a value add, you know, that's the plan, right? Somebody buys it, they do the value add, they sell it. But then seeing it come on the market again, right? Mm. And, and frankly, each time it came on the market, it was advertised by the brokers as a value add, right? And uh, very different from things, how I got started, you know, value add meant you repositioned the property and you sold it to somebody who was gonna hold it for a long time as a new rehabbed property, right? They mm -hmm. weren't gonna just turn around and claim to the next guy that, hey, you know, you can, we put in, you know, like white kitchens and you can tear them out now and mm. have like granite countertops and make more money. And then the next guy comes and says like, you know, you can tear out the granite and you can put in like, I don't know, like diamond countertops and get more money for it, right? So, uh, but that's sort of what happened. So an interesting article popped up in one of my email, uh, this the other day, uh, 10, the top 10 most frequently traded multifamily assets of the past decade. This is in multi-housing news. Okay. Uh, the article is actually dated April 22nd. So not, it was April 13th. So I'm not sure why it popped up yesterday, but there, they went through and looked at the uh, sort of traded assets over, and they don't actually define what multifamily means. So I don't know how large it has to be to qualify for, okay. uh, for this article, it, I'm sure it does not mean five unit apartments. No, probably not. You no, know? you would but hope it, not. But it didn't say what it does include. But anyway, this is very, very interesting. So from Yardi Matrix's database of 83,000, almost 84,000 properties nationally, mm -hmm. um, there, and they looked at this from 2012 to 2021, oh, okay. there were 4,500 properties, which is more than 5% of the total that traded at least three times over that decade, right? So wow. basically just churning properties. There were 58 properties, so 58 properties that, hold on, let me read this. Uh, so 2,600 were three times, 40, almost 500 traded four times. There were 58 properties that traded five times. <laughs> and there were nine properties that traded six times in that period, right? And each time the value went up, right? Presumably, yeah. Presumably. each time I'm sure it was sold as a, you know, about here, here's your value add, go, you know, do yeah. that, charge higher rent, higher, yeah. and, and then and then got validated because oh yeah, I've been rising like crazy, right? But this is essentially when things are ch churning, when there's that much churn in the market, right? Yeah, and they don't tell you how many traded two times in 10 years. Oh, it's got to so be. Like probably half of the properties, which, which we know it's not surprising because usually people have got a three to five year hold. Right? Okay. Right. But um, nevertheless, like the, the fact that there have been some properties that just churn and churn and churn. And the, like, this is just another example, in my opinion, that the, and, Fed, the Fed broke housing. And guess where they all are. So of, of those nine that traded six times or more, I'm going to guess Texas. Well, you, so three of them were in Texas. And then I'm going to guess Sunbelt for most of them. Yeah. So three, three in Dallas, Fort Worth, three in Atlanta, and three in Phoenix. Yeah, there you go. It was an outlier in Winston-Salem. Hmm. For some reason, I traded a whole bunch of times. But wow. I mean, it's kind of nuts that they would be that the velocity of trading would be so fast because, and just showing that like, the, the, the rise in prices basically incentivizing people to sell and cash out mm -hmm. quickly when like typically either you're going to hold like either you're going to do like one of three things you're going to you're going to rehab it and turn it around in, mm -hmm. in basically 18 to 24 months and sell it that's your business model yeah right or you're going to do it for sort of a 
buy it and hold it for five years or so, mm -hmm. right? And just collect the rents, collect mm -hmm. the, the return. Or you're going to buy it and hold it for essentially forever, right? I mean, 10 years or more, because you're just like, you're recognizing that time is your friend. Mm -hmm. And you're going to, maybe your strategies are going to be refi, take out cash, refi, take out cash, you know, until sure. refi till you die, right? Mm -hmm. And um, with this kind of like active flipping in these properties, it just is indicative of where the market has gone. Yes. And I think indicative of, of the, there is kind of like, well, there's, to me, it's a sign that pain's coming. This, this is not normal. This is not usually real estate. Certainly large multifamilies should not normally do this. But when it works, the, I, again, I think the Fed created an era of easy money, easy yeah. profits. It also attracted a lot of people where their business model came. Hey, the whole key is to own it. Go, go tweak to prove the model and sell it again. And again, it, if it worked once, do it again. And, and now this tide is going out and we're going to find out who overpaid and it's going to be. A yeah. I mean, so listen, I mean, this is, this is sort of the greater fool theory. You keep on selling until somebody is left holding the bag, yep. right? but, but nobody ever believes they're the one who's going to be holding the bag. Right. They always believe that there's going to be a greater fool after them. And, you know, and it, again, like to your point about the fed, like the fed has really created a, a lot of this problem, not mm -hmm. just on the, on the side of the, you know, cheap money, making it easier to buy apartments but cheap money making it easier to buy houses would then priced a huge number of people out of the market forcing them to rent and causing rents to rise so this has been really really great in terms of essentially like transferring wealth from the have-nots to the haves right exactly like like basically it's all this is all like being built on the backs of like working people who have to ever pay ever increasing rent to keep the whole party going. And it's been, you know, that's what keeps it going. The ever increasing prices of apartment buildings are paid for by ever increasing rents. Yeah. Right? And this is just anecdotal, but I saw something on Business Insider the other day, mm -hmm. which is one example, but someone like did a TikTok about how their rent doubled, almost doubled in Texas from 2,500 to 4,400 bucks. The landlord just said, okay, you're going to pay. And that, and Look, I, I'm, I'm part of this conversation, like there, there is this, you know, like idea, like, well, this is the market. You tell tenants, like, this is the new rent. If you don't pay it, somebody else will, mm -hmm. right? But this is like, it's not, not, it's it's, not healthy, right? This I is mean, not healthy. This, this is a sign of problems coming again. And Texas is not the only place I've had. I've spoken to people in Florida. Uh, where rents have doubled or almost doubled. It's, it's, um, we have a cost of living crisis going on right now. Uh, the have nots, as you said, kind of are, are being asked to bear the brunt of this. It's not getting better. We had CPI at 8.3, PPI at 11 today. And those are with bogus rent numbers. We all know that rent's gone up more than 4.3%, which is what's in CPI. I actually said something today on my daily financial news that I think is coming, and that is going to be price controls. I think price controls are going to be announced probably in the next 90 to 180 days. I'm totally against it. I think it's a sign of desperation. Um, but again- They felt so miserably under Nixon. I know they did, yeah. Try it again, like, you know. They, they're grasping at straws, right? You can only blame Putin so much and they got to do something. So I think, I think they're coming. I think there'll be a final act of desperation. But you got you to stand back and go, God, 100% increase. You know, it's, and it's not an anomaly anymore. It's not like- all right, there was one property that's oceanfront that you know somebody didn't raise rents for decades and it should double. No, these yeah. are just ho hum properties that are being asked to double, and yeah. people people can't afford it. Because twenty five hundred bucks in a place like I think the property was in Dallas is already like high yeah. rent, right? I mean, I think, yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's like I mean it's not New York City, right? Twenty five hundred bucks doesn't get you much in New York City, but like in in Dallas, those are like high end. That's the higher end of the rent scale, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not talking then jumping to 4,500, like suddenly you're talking New York City prices. Uh, I mean, I don't know, I think there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff, weird stuff going on right now. I mean, I'm looking at deals, right? Mm -hmm. In Texas and New York. Mm -hmm. New York is a bargain there. Yeah, right? isn't that like, amazing? Yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, you can buy, Texas deals are trading at like a, like sub fours caps, the cap mm -hmm. rate, sub four, even with interest rates going up. In New York, I'm seeing deals that are almost five, you know, five percent in New York wow. City. And maybe it's not apples to apples. These aren't like 
but generally speaking, like I'm not, it's not, that, that's not normal. Again, this, everything is broken right now. It's, it's yeah. broken. And, and when things are broken, it's going to take it. This is not going to be fixed in a weekend. This yeah. is going to evolve and change. There will be people that are hurt and there yeah. will be some people that profit. Let's be clear, both sides. But I don't think we know who it is yet. I think back to this article, uh, the greater fool theory is going to mean a lot of people get hurt. One asset trading, or what was it? Nine assets trading six times in a decade is not normal. That last person's going to get and it. The, and frankly, the same markets. This wasn't like- evenly, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they weren't even, spread out. Yeah, it wasn't evenly distributed around the country where you'd say this is just anomalies. Like these are focused in three, not, no surprise at all which mm -hmm. three markets these are. Yeah, I would have guessed two of the three. I, I think I would have missed- I would have missed Atlanta, Phoenix, Dallas. Yeah. Atlanta, Dallas, Phoenix, right? I mean, these are people have just been piling into these markets. And I mean, listen, like I've, I've been saying this for a long time. There's a lot of herd mentality. Absolutely. In real estate. And it used to be that the herd was like New York, San Francisco. Yeah. Class, Boston, uh, Los Angeles, tier one. Yeah. Or Miami, right? I mean, that was, that was the herd. And then, and people will said, well, why the hell are you investing in South Carolina? What are you you're some kind of fool? Yeah. And then they all piled into South Carolina, right? Because they all like saw what was going on. And then, mm -hmm. you know, across the Sun Belt, and everybody follows everybody else. Now, this is listen, if you were if you have enough courage to and you know, the reason the herd travels together is because it feels safe. The of problem course. is the herd will then run over the cliff together. Right. Oh yeah, it, so, it'll be safe right up until the moment it's not. Yeah, right up until it's not anymore, right? But if you're if you're the kind of person who, and I, I've always had this, I just I don't the herds make me nervous. Mm -hmm. I, I've always been, you know, like I see herds, I see like like you know goose stepping soldiers in Red Square, right? That's yeah. that's that's what that reminds me of, and like yeah. So I always want to. Um, go where they're not going. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's why I go to meetups all the time is I'm trying to figure, you know, I, a, I'm trying to provide value. Sure. But I'm trying to figure out where the eight, you know, the 80 or hundred people, where are they looking? Yeah. And the last couple I've gone to, and I haven't been to one in like a year, but everybody was a brand new syndicator. I'm like, Oh, this is not good. Yeah. This is not good. Yeah. yeah. So you have to um, look where other people are not looking. Agreed. Right. And, and that's, that's a way to like create, value and and but it's always like people are always fighting the last war so to speak like yeah, i know a lot of for sure when when I, a decade ago a lot of people were saying oh texas is great because it didn't have a bubble mm -hmm. right yeah it, it, and so therefore yeah. it is a safe place to go plus look at all this population growth right so every so that everyone piles into the place where there was no bubble before creating a bubble this time Right. Yeah. That's or those tax true. increases. I've had more and more people telling me they oh. have to sell because it's they're they've listen, gone from wildly positive to negative cash flow. You want to know why I never did Texas? That's the reason. Yeah. I mean, listen, you know, there so everyone's like, oh, Texas has no income tax. It's great, it's great, it's great. The money's got to come from somewhere, and that's where it comes from. And mm -hmm. I I also speak to syndicators now who are like, I'm not looking in Texas anymore yeah. because the post the post sale tax increases are just so huge that I can't make any money, exactly. right? And uh, I mean, you know, hopefully they'll fix that problem, but that's where they get their money from, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's not like Texas is like a high service state. Like, I don't know how much fat there is to cut. Yeah. Like that. So what are they gonna do, right? And all that stuff, get, yeah. so it's, it's also all very local control in Texas. So all that's going to like the school. So you better mm -hmm. believe that like, you know, the parents in those school systems are like, hey, you know, well, yeah, maybe you cut our taxes, but commercial property, forget it. Those guys, those yeah, rich guys, bang the rich, yeah. Okay, right. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's there's going to be a reckoning. I think. Uh, I totally it's agree. Something. Yeah. Well, Jonathan, do me a favor. Where can people find you and tell us about the deal you have in the works? Yeah. So, uh, I you can find me lots of places. Uh, my free Facebook group is always a good place to go. That's called Multifamily Investment Community. Uh, if you would like to join my coaching program and learn how to be a syndicator, and even though we're just making fun of new syndicators, <laughs> you want to learn how to do it the right way, not just like pick up a book and say, oh, I'm a syndicator now. Mm -hmm. uh, come to my program. It's very, very, very affordable. Uh, it is called Multifamily Launchpad. You can go to multifamilylaunchpad.org slash join, 
and see all the details there and see how reasonable the whole thing is and what you get. And uh, I do have a current deal going on. And as much as I have just sort of poked fun at Phoenix, this is a deal in Phoenix. We are buying this deal at a very good discount. We're already seeing our, under, our underwriting being borne out by rent increases that are on the property before we even get in there. If you are interested in this deal, it is for accredited investors only. This is a 506C raise, so you must be accredited, must be able to prove it. If you want to learn more, come to my uh, website and join my email list. Just Google Two Bridges Asset Management LLC. You'll see the investor form right there, and you can just sign up and I'll put you on the list. Very cool. Thanks, Jonathan.